Welcome back this is part 1 of. What if Issei and Rias had a powerful child? Alright let's begin. Prologue. Time leap. Ha ha ha. Magnificent you still do not disappoint me. Said a being of grotesque appearance. Its shape was spherical with a bundle of endless flesh and random body parts appearing and disappearing. Its voice was combination of countless creature and animal. Anyone who listened to its voice would drive anyone insane. In front of this horrifying creature is a jet black armored child, yes, a child. The person body was that of a child wearing a broken armor but clearly seen the dragon motif with four wings yet only one remain. The child face was visible through the broken helmet. It had discolored eyes and long pure white hair that had red streaks to it. From afar his youthful face made it hard to distinguish if he's a boy or a girl. His right eyes had the color of gold and the left one had a light blue color that shined brightly like a pair of jewels. He was badly injured and bleeding in every part of his body that made it look like he had bathed in a pool of blood, every move he made a blood bled. Arg. He grunted as he took a heavy breath, he was extremely tired evident by his rugged breathing. Aha. Ha. H. Yo. Dot you. Said the child trying its best to speak even if he's near the verge of dying. Even though fatally wounded, his eyes was still burning with determination that could make anyone flinch. Haha <laughs> even how many time you're in the verge of dying you do not give up, it is simply amazing. I'll, I'll key, I'll kill you, said the child regaining his power, his body glow of dark red energy that envelope him. Using his remaining wing he launched himself with incredible speed which looked like he teleported. The grotesque being simply smile with its endless mouths. A gigantic whip-like tentacle move in incredible speed flicking the boy. The boy tried its best to block the attack yet it was futile cause he was hit with another tentacle and four other held his limbs. Arg! You bastard! You killed them all! My father! My mother! My siblings! My friends you killed them all you bastard! Shouted by the boy that was continuously being whipped. He felt every hit scraping a part of his flesh, it was simply hell. Ha 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 do not forge it in about your precious little world. Said the being mocking the boy. The place of nothingness once had an endless planet that was destroyed by this terrifying creature, leaving nothing even a single pebble. You, will pay, for this Nyarlathotep. He couldn't do anything, he was incredibly weakened to the point he will die any second if not for his armor. The tentacles that attack him was holding him down unable him to move. Ha 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 I still can't believe you lasted for a thousand years fighting me. Well I do give you more credit since you are the child of Issei Hayudu and that demon woman. Bluntly said the being, Niar Lothotep, clearly bored. Do not insult my mother, her name is Rias Hayudu. Said angrily, he was pissed that he was remembering how they were mercilessly slaughtered by this being. Even after a thousand of years of being tortured, he never forgotten his friends and family. Remember not to regret keeping me alive he knew damn well why he was still alive for millennia this being made him a slave torturing him endlessly giving him false hope but he know it was futile since nothing exists still he was happy that none of his family will experience this agonizing torment ha 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 do not worry for i will not regret it now then where were we said niar lothotep as they continue their battle that creates immense energy that shoot throughout the abyss ta take this said the boy as he promptly escaped its grasp and was charging a colossus ball of dark energy the size was ridiculous it's the same size as the moon i'm ha huh? not done yet compress he shouted as the giant ball of energy gradually gotten smaller and smaller it was now it was the size of a marble total eclipse he shouted as he fired the beam that shoot out at unbelievable speed as it touches the being it suddenly exploded the blast was like a star exploding but the explosion did nothing, not even a scratch. Well that was disappointing, it was a lot weaker than earlier. It was annoyed that his fun is slowly being ruined. It had fought this boy for countless of times, yet it was the first time that he was disappointed. Fuck you, said the boy as he created more of that ball of dark energy, slowly he created not one, not two but a thousand. He was frustrated that the first attack did nothing, boiling in anger he assaulted the creature with his countless attack. Yes, finally, come now great eclipse dragon, exclaimed Niar Lothotep as it's starting to enjoy their battle. It started to release a dozen of tentacle attacking the boy. The boy barely dodges every assault of its tendrils, 
flying with a speed that was way faster than light it made look like he was just a streak of light. The boy created a blade using his dark energy managing to slash every single incoming attack. Ha 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 keep going believe that there is still hope. Feel me with your despair. Said Niar Lothotep as it started to create ball of energy to attack the boy. The boy saw the attack that was directed at him, knowing that he can't cut it. He simply closed his eyes and took a deep breath in. Devour. He scream as a phantom of a gigantic serpentine creature slither and coil itself around the boy. The creature has four dragon wings and four golden eyes on its faces. Its head had four horns that display like a crown and sharp dark red scale throughout its long body. It began to open its mouth and swallow every single incoming attack. Even though its was that of dragon and can't show any emotion but it was clearly delighted as it feast on its buffet. The being continued its assault enjoying every second of their battle. Impressive, you still able to use your sacred weapon though I doubt it's not eating away your sanity ops, you're already insane so it doesn't matter ha ha ha. Mock Niar Lothotep as it continued to attack with various of magic. The boy continued to not move and let the gigantic serpent dragon avatar devour every assault of attack. Niar Lothotep stopped attacking as it felt a pending danger, it saw with countless eyes what the boy was planning. The gigantic serpent dragon suddenly gave thundering roar as it finished devouring the last of the attack. Out of nowhere the serpent launched itself towards boy, clearly absorbing the serpent dragon. Such a foolish move. You have already done this numerous of times and you know what would happen next. What was the boy planning highly dangerous because he planned to absorb the energy of the attack and making it his own. Veins began to pop on the boy's face and stream of blood flow down on his eyes. He screamed in agony but did not stop the dragon and continued to absorbing it. Every single fiber of his body was screaming in pain but this only made him remember the memories that kept him alive. The perverted moment he did with his father, the sweet smile of his mother, the heartwarming healing magic of Asia, his sword sparring with his uncle Kiba, Irina and Zenovia, his education from Rossweiss, magic training with Akino, eating sweet with Kaneko, spending time with Kuroka, learning etiquette from Ravel, cooking and cleaning from Grafia, history from Serzek and too many wonderful things that happened in his life. Damn dad even in my dying moment you made me question again how you made so many women fall for you. His life flash in front his eyes, so many beautiful moment that was taken from him. His expression of contempt was changed into rage. It was the anger that of a hungry wild beast. You took everything from me. Shouted as the gigantic serpent dragon was fully absorbed by him. Then the raging energy disappear and silent filled the void, a moment of time passes that felt like an eternity. Then out of the blue the energy re-emerges and began to destroy the body of the boy from the inside. He made a blood-curdling scream, he tried his damn best to be consciousness. He knew if he screw this up he will die in vain, so he took a deep and long breath while Niar Lothotep just watches in disbelief. You really continue to amaze me, you're just like your foolish father. Said Niar Lothotep, trying to compose himself but clearly afraid as to what happened. This had happened for so many times for the past thousand years. Usually Niar Lothotep would be trilled yet for first time it felt danger. It knew that it will receive a fatal wound but will not be in danger. Something was wrong, he felt a deeper fear as it started to chant signaling his juggernaut drive. I, who am about to awaken, he started to chant and a burst of dark energy swirl around. Gradually the energy began to a form, a face of the dragon from earlier. I, who am about to awaken said a deep voice that was both calming and fierce. The boy's armor began to glow and slowly repairing itself. Every crack was being repaired by the unknown glow. Surging energy continued to swirl around from every word spoken. I'm the abandoned dragon who has devoured the despair of darkness from God. The boy continued as its helmet began to hit his face except for his hair that being dragged by the intense energy that leak out of his body. Though he felt immense pain he did not stop chanting. I hunger the, infinite and I feast at the, dream. I shall become the black eclipse dragon of despair, said the boys as its armor was fully repaired. The armor was jet black with red accent that gave a slick look, helmets that had four horns that looked like a crown and allowed his hair to be dragged by swirling energy. Four dragon wings and a fish-like tail that was longer than his body. I will not allow such resistance, 
shouted Nyarlathotep fear was clearly heard as it began to attack but found itself unable to go closer as every assault was being absorbed by the energy with little resistance. What is this? I have never seen you to be able to use your energy to absorb other energy. You were only able to absorb energy with your sacred gear. Scream Nyarlathotep trying his best to learn how he has able to use his own energy to absorb other energy even if he's doing a juggernaut drive. For this boy to absorb other form of energy he had to use his own sacred gear directly not with his energy. It was only possible if he was creating an attack. Stop this. Halt your foolishness and accept your despair. There nothing here for you to protect why resist. For endless of years it never felt this emotion, it felt like it was being devoured by a wild beast. This was an emotion that it knew so well yet never experienced. It the emotion, no, it's more like instinct. A primordial instinct that any living thing felt. Despair. And I shall swallow everything until my hunger is at peace. Scream of an unknown voice and at the same time. And I shall swallow everything until my hunger is at peace. He shouted as loud as he can as he know that this is his final chance and he will not waste any time for it to fail. He grunted as pain of needle-like pain that pierce every fur of his body, he knew that he would die yet did not care. He knew that there was a reason for him to live so long. He remembered how weak he was when his family and friend was being to shred, he witnessed every single living creature taking their last breath and saw how his father made a last stand. Killing the army of this abomination yet in the end the only thing that survived was me and this being. He gritted his teeth as tears of blood flowed his eyes, even after a thousand years of endless torture he did not give in and tried his best to know how to avenge his family. He knew that if he killed himself out of despair then the sacrifices of his loved ones was in vain. He needed to kill this creature for him to rest in peace and finally see his loved ones again. Devour thy feast, he screamed using his last breath to say his finale attack. A silhouette colossus serpent dragon that stretches across the galaxy, it iris was as big as the sun. This was the great dragon that let God devour his despair and was abandoned to be forgotten until his was feast prepared. This dragon was one track mind and does not talk much, it's like Trihexa but it does not destroy or eat anything only the spare of godly being. So that's why he is called abandoned dragon for being forgotten by God. Though when it bonded with a host then it devour all if the host wills it but there is a risk for it to devour its host. Arg! Roared the boy as its voice slowly changing into a sound of a wild beast. His body was also changing becoming more and more like a dragon. His mind was gone and a simple task was echoing in his head. Devour thy feast, his voice finally sounded like of that unknown voice that was clearly his sacred gear. The gigantic serpent dragon roar as well as it began opening its mouth, a long snake-like tongue launch in incredible speed wrapping itself to Nyarlathotep. Its feast was trying to escape but because of it, unbelievable size its effort was in vain. Every eyes that appear on its feast body was reflecting the abyss-like mouth. No, it tried creating millions of energy ball but it was in vain for every attack was being absorbed by this being. This despair, gradually it closes its mouth in. Arg, a last sound that was heard in this vast nothing as the serpent dragon slowly disappeared and what remained was armorless child. He wore a beautiful long cloak that covered his sleeveless vest and loose pant that was clearly made for a martial artist. He wore a necklace that had insignia that was clearly from his family and across earrings. In his left hand was a single silver ring that was clearly a wedding ring. His eyes twitch as he tried his best to open it and was only able open it a tiny bit. His hand weakly move in his pocket taking a single photo, he was so weak that he took a whole minute for him to finally look at the photo. With his endless torture, he never able to look at this photo for the past thousand years but finally he could see them. He scanned the photo as he saw so many people but most of them was a woman. This was his father's harem. Ha 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 you're really one lucky bastard for you to have so many lovers. I promise myself when I finally see you in the abyss I will tell you again that you're one lucky bastard. He thought while laughing internally. I really have wish for a second chance to see you again, maybe it was only possible with this photo. What do you desire? Out of nowhere a calming voice that unclear if it was a man or a woman was heard. For your efforts I am willing to grant your wish for some condition. For whatever this condition I may ask of you, you must do it," said the calming voice. Whatever it is I am willing to pay for just to have a second chance to see them. He replied without any hesitation. 
He already lost everything if he was given another chance then he will not hesitate to do anything. But if that condition is to harm my loved ones then I won't do it. Fret not child I do not wish harm for you or your family, furthermore I can't interfere much in mortal affair, said the calming voice. So let me guess, that condition is for me to act as your voice or something. Yes child but though you cannot tell them who I am for there will be consequences far from my control. All right if that's the case then let's begin. He was thrilled to hear that the conditions was simple enough though he will still on guard for he still has his doubt. Patience, my child before we begin you must know that when you return to the past I will not know when in the past you will be sent. What, then it's possible I will send back even before I am born or even before my parent met. He knew that sending someone in the past is a very complicated thing and there's so many theory about that is so confusing, so it bound to have complication. I am sorry my child but fret not even if you are not conceived in that time you will still exist, explained the voice with a tone of sadness. So it's multiverse theory huh? Well it's alright I am happy as long I able to see or spend time with them. He replied as he finally noticed that he isn't breathing anymore and his body was frozen in place looking at the photo. He knew that he was already dead. Yes my child you have died and I have hold your soul as I will send it back to the past. Wait will I be just some wandering soul then? He exclaimed since there is no way that he wanted to be a ghost. Oh my absolutely not, I will send your soul back and create a new body for you and do not worry you still have the same appearance. Ah I see then I'm ready when you are. If he could move then he will have a big grin. He was really excited to finally see them again alive and well. He swore even if they do not remember him, he will protect them with his life like they did for him. A countless regret he will finally pay and promises that he had broke. This day with a burning desire for his friends and family, he will grow stronger. Then let us meet again in that other world, it said as light gradually enveloped the boy. The light was like the warmth of a mother's hands or the admiration for a father that protect its children. The boy mind was finally relaxed and at peace, a life full of regret and despair was finally over and a resting place awaits him. Ah before I disappear I want to know your name. He did need to at least know who he was talking to before he start his task. I have many name and I am who created all that is life. Many know of my death yet few accept, I am the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit, God of the Bible. Said in calming voice, WH, what why you mean, your, your him. He couldn't believe, it was simply impossible yet here he is talking to one of the most powerful being in existence. Long ago he was defeated in the Great War, after the battle the angels made the death of their father to be the most guarded secret. Ha ha forgive me for surprising you my child, he chuckled for the boy's reaction. Ah, ah, d don't worry about it my l lord. I am just feeling a little sting with your divine light. The boy was a devil, his parent was both demon and specially his mother who was one of the nobles of the demons. He couldn't help but feel a tiny bit of pain when the light was finally enveloped his whole body. It seemed that Lord had made so that he will not feel any serious pain. His doubt slowly disappears since this was God then he will trust him with all his might. Hey I couldn't help since Mother Zenobia, Mother Irina and Mother Asia thought him about praying. Since he was a child angel Michael had allow him to pray and after that he has his faith that was as strong as them. They have taught you well. Ah it would seem that this is our goodbye my child. Ah, I hope we meet again, my lord. He was thankful for his second chance. Gradually his body began to disappear and he felt his mind was shaken violent as he saw. Dozen of images flashes in his eyes and one them he saw his family was in danger he didn't saw it clearly but he knew that they were in danger and didn't think twice as the image gradually disappear and what he only saw was dust and debris. He close his eyes took a long and deep breath slowly opening his eyes and saw the bright moon was radiating its beautiful glow. For the first time for a millennia he felt freedom. As he tried taking a step, he instantly felt a sharp and excruciating pain as if taking a surgery and replacing every single organ in his body. He gasped heavily as he tried staying conscious, he knew it was not safe if he suddenly collapsed in the middle of nowhere. Aha! Ha! Ha! His bulge opened on what he saw when the dust cleared. It felt like seeing a ghost as he scanned each and every one. A group's people that had expression of fear, a pretty boy with white hair holding a double-edged sword, a young maiden with yellow hair, a lowly with white hair, 
a sadistic looking woman with a long dark ponytail, a blue haired woman holding a beautiful sword, but focus his gaze in particular person. The person he truly wanted to be reunited, the person that brought him to life, the person that loved him so much. I, I'm home, mother, father, I said softly as I gave a gaze of contempt. His hell had truly disappeared and new task awaits him. Chapter 1. I'm home and I'm sorry. Rias Pav. After Issei defeated Riser leading to my marriage being revoked, I was happy and finally free. I started living with him in Asia in Hyodo resident. One day when we were having a meeting in Issei's room, we had counted each and everyone's contract, mother's Issei provided us with snack. She was extremely nice and welcomed me like I was their own daughter. She showed us old photos of Issei when he was a child, one of the photo he naked which was extremely adorable. After one of my peerage, Kiba saw a photo of Issei's childhood friend he started dozing off and seemed troubled by something. The next night when we were subjugating a rouge demon his dozing off had caused one of my peerage, Kaneko received an attack but luckily there were no serious damage and we were able to kill the rouge demon successfully. At first I did not know what bothering him but when Issei showed me the photo and told me that Kiba called the sword in the background a holy sword, and my suspicion was supported when Issei told me that his childhood often invite him to the church. I explained to Issei in Asia about the history of holy sword and the past of Kiba, how he was the only survivor of an experiment called holy sword project, where all of the children were killed. This is troublesome since after a few days Sona Sitri, sister of one the devil king told me that he encountered people from the church and they wanted to meet the next day. I was started to worry about Kiba since his past is all coming back though I knew this would happen eventually I still felt afraid for my night. I immediately went to Issei's home and luckily nothing bad had happened except they told me that they were visited by two women carrying a holy sword and one them as Issei's childhood friend. After that day true to their world people from the church did come to me. Two women sat in front one had long chestnut twintail hair with a cheerful face, named Irina and next to her is a young woman with chin length blue hair with a dyed green fringe on the right side and brown eyes, named Zenovia. Both of them wore a long robe that covered their skin-tight clothing. They began telling about what happened, apparently the fallen angel had stolen some holy sword, and told us not to get involved, this had pissed me off since they thought that we would ally ourselves with fallen angel. I vow in front of them that I would not intervene in the name of my family. As they began to leave they spotted Asia, word of insult came out of their mouths. Telling about all of sort of mockery and called Asia a witch. Before I snap Issei confronted them and protected Asia as the blue haired one had began to pull her sword to see Asia faith. Suddenly Kiba spoke and challenged this people in a duel then went outside. Kiba fought the blue haired woman and Issei fought his childhood friend while doing his usual perverted mind. After their sparring the blue haired woman started talking and told us that the leader of Gregory and a leader class fallen angel, Kokobiel was behind all of this. This is troublesome since Gregory is an organization involving the fallen angel faction. This may be bigger than I thought. The next night I learned that my peerage along with Saji, Sona's pawn had joined the two people from church in search of the fallen angels. They fought Freed Selzen for a while but he managed to escape with the help Valpier Galilee the one that lead the Holy Sword Project, still I was thankful enough that they were not in any danger. I let Kiba do what he must and I knew he wasn't in any danger with the help of that two women and even if he try to call Kiba he will not answer my call. The next day I made my familiar to scour the town in hopes to find Kiba and finally we were managed to find Issei's childhood friend she was badly wounded and exhausted from fighting. Even Asia's hauling wasn't able to do anything but luckily Sona along with her queen, Subaki. Sona have some equipment that may able to help her and Subaki carried Irina so that she could heal her and after she disappeared, Freed appear out of nowhere and before we tried to attack he began tell that he has a message from his boss. We look up and saw a ten wings angel with long dark robe that cover his whole body and a sinister smile. This was the leader class fallen angel Kokobiel. He began greeting us and told that he desire a war of free faction. He explained that if one of the sister of the devil were harmed they would surely appear. He told that he will start by destroying the coup academy, we immediately start attack but with no avail. Kokobiel have vanished along with Freed, they most likely in the school. We teleported in front the entrance and with the help of Sona's peerage we were able to create a barrier at least strong enough to contain the after of the battle. 
Sona told me that I must call my brother since she knew that her brother will surely arrive. I reluctantly agreed and planned to delay Kokobil enough so that my brother to arrive. In the open field of our track above hover a throne where Kokobil sat, his face rest on his left hand. He questioned which devil king will arrive her brother or Sona's sister, suddenly snap his finger a long light spear of energy emerges and was launched at the gymnasium, with a giant explosion we were pushed back by the attack. The place was gone and only a giant create was left, this is the power of a leader class fallen angel. After that initial attack he quickly summoned his pet, the guard dog of hell, Cerberus. We were having a hard time fighting this creature but thanks to Issei boosted gear we were able to take the upper hand yet two more Cerberus appear of nowhere. It was a tough battle that would have taken a while but luckily Kiba and that holy sword user, Xenovia arrive and quickly dispatches the other two Cerberus. I saw Kiba confront Valpir, this was his past, his vengeance. He did not think and immediately tried to attack him but Kokobil snap his finger and summon a light spear with a loud explosion, Kiba was directly hit by the attack resulting him to lay on the ground. Kokobil scream freed name and instantly replied, he show his new holy. Sword weapon, Escalibur nightmare. Xenovia quickly attacked freed and began their battle, Freed managed to dodge the attack with incredible speed while manically laughing. He tried attacking from behind Xenovia but quickly dodged and kicked Freed face. Freed angrily used sword ability to attack Xenovia but every attack was either block or dodge, suddenly Freed created a clone of himself and was able to corner Xenovia. Out of nowhere Issei appeared and kicked Freed faces in comical passion. I changed my gaze and saw Kiba struggling to stand up, Valpir looked at him while grinning. He began explaining how the children from the Holy Sword Project was harvest their genes to create a crystal which allowed humans to wield Holy Sword. In his hand hold a bluish crystal which Xenovia recognized, it was the blessing used to make people like her wield Escalibur. Valpir said something that the crystal he has is different from what the church use. He threw the crystal in front of Kiba and said he doesn't need it anymore since he can make more higher quality of it. Kiba grasped the crystal and started to pray. He questioned his reason for why he survived, the children with him had much higher dream than him. Gradually a faint bluish glow began to take shape, it was clearly people surrounding Kiba. Tears fell from Kiba's eyes as he continued to question himself, the sacrifices of his friends and his purpose to live so long. Kiba heard a quiet voice but I couldn't hear it clearly since I was far away from Kiba, yet I was sure that the voice was encouraging Kiba as he absorbed the crystal on his chest as tears flow on his cheeks. I smile because finally the burden that weighed Kiba for so many years has finally lifted. My comrade, they never wanted me to wish for revenge. They wanted me free but I'm not, first I need to destroy the evil in front of me. Then no one else has to suffer, said Kiba as he slowly getting close to Valpir while summoning a sword. He immediately called for Freed and jump in front Valpir shielding him from Kiba. Kiba, cut down both Freed and Escalibur shouted Issei encouraging Kiba and we follow suit, everyone gave their word of encouragement while tears fell. Yudo, do it, you have to finish this yourself. Surpass Escalibur, you are the servant of I, Rias Ramori. My, knight, will not lose to a mere Escalibur. I encourage as I was relieved to see my peerage grow as a person and move forward. Ha ha ha, why are you crying? You were singing with joy with the ghost. It's really a nuisance. It's totally the worst. You know I hate that song. Just listening to it makes the hair on my skin crawl. I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm totally at my limit. I'm going to cut you into pieces and calm myself. With this ultimate Escalibur that has merged four of them. Shouted Freed clearly annoyed by this moment. Kiba closes his eyes began to chant and slowly his sword began to change shape as white and dark energy swirl around and absorb by the new sword. This was clearly his using his sword rebirth yet something was different about it. Kiba shouted the name of his new sword the, Sword of Betrayal, a sword composed of holy and devil powers. This was simply impossible, Issei began to explain that D. Drake, his sacred gear said that Kiba have peaked, this was his balance breaker. Valpir was in shock trying his best to deny reality. He began to approach Freed alongside Xenovia who also preparing to summon something. Suddenly a magic circle appear and from the magic circle emerge a giant bluish sword that was bound by chains. In the names of the saints whom reside within this blade, I will release it. Durandal, 
shouted Zenovia as he held the sword in his hands. Durandal. This was a real holy sword, an Excalibur unlike what freed Urkiba. Wielded. Both Kokobiel and Valpir was astonished from the revelation. Zenovia was actually a chosen wielder of Excalibur. With high speed both Kiba and Zenovia slash at Freed, he tried dodging but with the might of the two, he was eventually overwhelmed and broke his holy sword. He screamed as he was wounded by one of the attack. Now Freed was defeated Valpir was now in complete denial of reality, distracting himself away from inevitable then out the blue a light spear stab itself to Valpir killing him instantly. Kokobiel began to descend from the sky while his clothes flattering with the wind, his present was truly terrifying. I question asked why he killed his comrade and he bluntly replied that he removed he deemed tedious. A wide grin spread on his face as he suggested Issei to boast me, I tried to act to calm but I knew I could die any moment. I held Issei's hand tight as we were running out of time, I'm started to get scared but did not show my fear. Issei looked at me worried but just held my hands since he knew what he needed to do. We slowly moved forward as Issei's sacred gear started to boost. When finally he transferred the energy to me, I felt the overwhelming energy from each of my body. I will give my all until my brother arrive, I have to delay as much time as possible. I shot two ball of energy trying at least to weaken him yet this did nothing as he just laugh and enjoy every minute of it. I can't hold any more and collapse on the ground. Issei was running towards me as I tried to stand. I immediately saw Akino launching lighting attack, I tried to stop her but I was too late. Kokobiel laughed and said the name of the person that Akino hated most, Barakiel. I heard Issei ask what Barakiel was clearly not know it was a person. Akino was eventually exhausted herself from using her power, Kokobiel used his wings as a shield protected himself from her attack. One by one Kokobiel mocked my peerage and revealed Akino's tragic past, she was the daughter of Barakiel the fallen angel. I held myself from getting angry but when he insulted my peerage then I would hold back any more. With high speed he descend from the sky and challenge all of them knowing that we won't be able to harm him. I heard Issei insulted Kokobiel, he didn't show any fear and only anger. Kokobiel grin as he create a light sword preparing to attack. Issei run towards him as Zenovia and Kiba gave their support, both slash their sword at Kokobiel yet was blocked by the sword light, Kaneko tried helping by attack behind but was attacked by Kokobiel's wings. Both Issei and Asia quickly run towards Kaneko helping her. As he slash his two light sword, a beam of light was unleashed. The attack was directed at Asia but luckily Issei used his body as shield to protect her. Both Kiba and Zenovia extremely exhausted trying their best to stand up. Kokobiel sneer and waited for them to attack, Kiba was able to stand up and use sword rebirth to summon sword to attack Kokobiel but was immediately blocked by his wings. Kiba used this moment to come closer and slash his sword, the slash was blocked by Kokobiel but Kiba instantly created a sword on his mouth managing to cut Kokobiel face. Boiling with anger Kokobiel couldn't accept that he was wounded and angrily created a ball of energy sending towards Kiba, who was unable to move but luckily Zenovia jumped in front of the attack managing to slash the beam. We gave everything yet was only able to put a tiny cut on his face. Everyone face showed despair knowing that this may be their final moment. Only Kokobiel had a smirk on his face. Seeing that even after losing the masters you serve, you devils and followers of God can still fight, huh, said Kokobiel making everyone confused. Quote ellipsis dot, mind clarifying, I said trying to figure out what his tying to, do, fuhaha. Fu ha 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 ha. That's right. I totally forgot. The truth wasn't revealed to you lower guys. Then I will tell you. In the war between the three sides, not only the three great devil king but also God died. Everyone here was shocked and couldn't believe what he just said. It's normal for you guys to not know about it. Who can say that God has died? Humans are an incomplete bunch. Without God, they cannot control their hearts and obey the laws, you know. Even us, the fallen angels, and devils couldn't tell this to those below us. You won't know where the information about God will be leaked from. Even among the three powers, only the people at the top and certain people know about it. Though it seems Balba noticed it earlier. Ellipsis dot dot, God of the, Bible is dead. No impossible, it can't be. Kokobiel declared his argument strongly. His face was expressing anger. The real truth made an impact on us more than we thought. 
Asia covered her mouth with her hands, opened her eyes wide, and her whole body shook. Even if she turned into a devil, her belief didn't disappear. God doesn't exist. God is dead. Then the love we were given by him is. Kokabil answered Asia's doubt with a laugh. That's right. It's normal that there is no love from God and no divine protection from him. God is gone already. Michael is certainly doing well. He's taking the place of God and is taking care of the angels and humans. Well, if the system used by God is operating, then the prayer to God, the blessing of God, and exorcism would function. But if you compare it to the time God was present, the number of believers decreased. That holy demonic sword brat over there was able to create the holy demonic sword because the balance between God and the devil king broke. In reality, holy and demonic powers cannot merge. If the ones who rule the power of holy and demonic powers, God and the devil kings, disappear, then lots of unique phenomenons occur. Then the reason why Kiva's holy demonic sword was created was no coincidence. It turned out like that because God didn't exist anymore. Hearing Kokobiel's words, Asia dropped onto the floor. Asia, pull yourself together, Asia. Issei held her and called out to her. It wasn't weird for her to get shocked. Kokobiel put his fist up in the air. From here on out, I will start a war. I will take your heads as a gift. Even if it's only me, I will continue from where we left off. I'm going to show Sirzex and Michael that we, the fallen angels, are the ultimate beings. Everyone collapsed from shocked. Both my brother and Michael are powerful beings and yet this monster was trying to fight them. They couldn't do anything since everything was futile yet only one person deny this. Issei. Don't fuck with me, I won't let you destroy my town. My comrade, Prez, and Asia, just for your selfish motives. And I'm going to become a harem king. I would be troubled if you get in my way. Issei said as everyone felt shock from his stupid declaration but as if some kind of signal, a surging energy was building up between them and Kokobiel. Everyone was shocked at what was happening even Kokobiel was speechless from this change phenomenon. The wild energy slowly dimmed down as it just left smoke that blocked our vision from Kokobiel. Gradually the dusk cleared and we saw a child with a long white hair that had crimson red streak that danced alongside the wind. He wore a dark cloak that hid a dark sleeveless vest, a dark red long sleeve that was folded reaching the elbow and loose pant that used by martial artist. Is. Is that, I thought as I saw a necklace that had a grimoire insignia and a pair of cross earnings. The child was looking at the moon taking a deep breath as if he was awoken from a deep slumber. The child tried, taking a step but all of sudden collapsed on his knees, he breathed heavily trying to stay consciousness. He grasped his head as pain continued to overcome him but he managed to lift his head and look at us. From afar his youthful face made it hard to distinguish if he's a boy or a girl, his right eyes had the color of gold and the left one had a light blue color that shined brightly like a pair of jewels. As he scanned us one by one his expression changed from pain to satisfaction. Looking at him made my heart ache reminding me of my nephew, I was trying my best not cry from this unknown burst of emotion but it was in vain as tears started to flow from my eyes. Prez, what's wrong why are you crying? Screamed Issei as he tried comforting me yet my tears did not stop. My gaze was locked to the young boy that appeared out of nowhere. I saw his mouth move trying to say something but it very weak and couldn't understand it. Rius this is the first I saw you cry this much, tell me what happened. Said Akino sounded really concerned. I can't reply since I don't know what happening to me. Ah. Dot ha, I don't. No. I said as tears fell from my cheeks. Everyone look at what I'm looking and saw the child who was struggling to move towards them. Who is that kid? Hey brat why did go and ruin my moment? shouted Issei clearly annoyed that his moment was interrupted by this boy. Finally the dusk cleared and Kokobiel was watching this unexpected guest that was clearly struggling to walk. Ha 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 who is this? Is this your trump card on defeating me, a leader class fallen angel? Tell me what are you planning from summoning this little child, devil king's bitch? Everyone couldn't reply since no one knew who this is or what's going on. The child turned his gaze towards Kokobiel and he flinched from the gaze of the child. Even though he looked like he's about to collapse any moment, his gaze was terrifying like a hungry wild beast. What did you just say to her? Angrily said the boy as it gradually changed his direction and was walking toward Kokobiel. Kokobiel couldn't help but to step back as he felt fear. He's getting afraid, 
With a snap of his finger he summoned dozen of light weapon. What is happening? Me, a leader class fallen angel who had fought in the great war of the three faction afraid of this frail child. He screamed as he shot his light energy with incredible speed. This was it. We were going to die. Then suddenly we heard something unbelievable. Sacred gear. The child scream as he raises his left hand bursting with dark energy, sound of metal clanging as his hand began to change. A dark gauntlet appear on his left hands, it had four golden orb as if it was an eyes, it was similar to Issei's boosted gear but had more slicker and simple design. Everyone couldn't even take any breath from the action of this strange child. Number way another sacred gear user. Muttered Issei as he was so shocked that he couldn't even remember what he just said earlier. The boy was clearly using a sacred gear yet felt different and foreign, something that shouldn't exist. Devour. Shouted as he directed his left arm from the incoming attack. As the two collide the light energy that Kokobiel was slowly consumed by the arm of the boy. Everyone hold their breath from every action the child made including Kokobiel, who was stunned. Deadly silent echoed as the boy took a deep breath as if concentrating. Everyone, be caution this child's sacred gear is something I do not know but I am sure it is a dragon. Everyone was bewildered when Issei's sacred gear spoke and warned us, he couldn't figure out what dragon could this be. What really? Another sacred gear that is also a drag, suddenly he was cut by the words that the child just spoken. Balance Breaker. With a booming sound pieces of dark armored started appearing, start from his hand and spread throughout his body. The armor was jet black with red accent that gave a slick look, helmet that had four horns that looked like a crown and allowed his hair to be dragged by swirling energy. Four dragon wings and a fish-like tail that was longer than his body. WH what? This is really interesting, I did not know the family of Grimori had such trump card. Very well I will play with this little toy and kill the rest of you. Before he could finish his word, a punch with incredible speed hit face launching him far distance. Say that again and I'll rip you to shred. Said the boy as he prepared another attack but was intervened by light attack. He blocked every single light spear, he was protecting us. Such a powerful child. Said Akino with her usual sadistic gaze. It's pretty unbelievable that's a mere child capable that. Said Kiba who truly shocked. He's pretty amazing compared to some pervert who dreamed to be a harem king. Bluntly said Kaneko as she was being healed by Asia. What do you mean by that Kaneko? Can't a man as myself have a dream, angrily Issei. What? Dot who is that? Said Asia as she was taken aback how brutal the child was. True his word the child launch himself and grab Kokobiel wings, ripping every single wings to shred. Yet he did not stop and rip both Kokobiel arms off. Arg. He scream agony as his limb was rip out, with excruciating pain he tried his best escape with no avail as he was held in place by the boy's foot. Everyone was both relief and terrified as they saw how gruesome the child attack was except for Akino who was somewhat delighted. Now then you bastard, what were you saying again about my mother? He said menacingly, his tone was void of emotion it was the eternal abyss that gaze upon those who gaze into it. Wait, mother, I was confused, who was he talking about? Everyone was as confused as I was. What? Arg, what are you talking about? Mother, what nonsense are you spouting? Who is your mother? Kokobiel was bewildered by the words of this child. You really do not know. My name is Hiro Hayudu, the son of the Red Dragon of Domination, Issei Hayudu and Rias Grimori, the head of the Grimori family. Exclaimed the child with pride. Everyone was speechless from the revelation much like they learned the death of God or Issei's harem king dream. What? Everyone said at the same time with disbelief. Thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed see you next time okay bye.